Welcome back. Uh, today, we're going to be continuing our RPO series and covering the VBAR, RBAR, uh, the VBAR approach sequence. And this can be found under the RPO specialized RBAR VBAR subfolder. And once again, we're going to be covering the VBAR, RBAR approach. Uh, sorry, the VBAR approach. So as the name suggests, the VBAR approach, we're going to be approaching our target along the VBAR. So we're going to go quickly look at our initial state, and we're going to start off at a 150 meter in-track offset, so 150 meters behind our target over here. And then we're going to be using this V-bar approach to get closer to it. In this case, we have a couple different options. We're going to have a final location of a 50 meter offset, so we're going to move to about here relative to our target. Um, and we have a lot more control over this as opposed to a V-bar hop with the V-bar approach. Uh, you can control both the transfer time as well as the radial error or errors off of offset from the V-bar as you approach. Um, this isn't going to, this is going to maintain a near constant viewing direction of your target, uh, uh, depending on your tolerances. But this is useful if you want to approach your target without um, changing viewing angles. So you always want to know, hey, that the target is always in my in-track direction. Um, that that's what this can be useful for. And in order to accomplish this, we're going to be doing um, an initial burn to change our in-track direction. Um, so we're going to burn basically towards my target satellite, um, uh, in-track velocity rather. Uh, and then once we're actually drifting towards my target satellite, we're just going to do a series of small radial burns um, to make sure that I stay along my in-track direction or along the V-bar as I approach my target satellite. Um, so if I haven't already mentioned this, you do need to start off on the V-bar. And we're pretty much going to continue on to it to another final location for the V-bar. Um, taking a look at our parameters over here, we have a final offset, in this case 50 meters, um, a transfer time. Um, in this case, it's going to be um, 360 minutes. How much is my max radial error over here? Um, so that transfer time is going to be basically dictate my initial burn um, to go towards my target. Uh, these radial errors and radial error rates are going to determine how many small little radial maneuvers I need to do in order to stop. What engine model would I like to use? Would I like to use impulsive or finite? Um, who am I? I'm the RPO. And then also make sure that this sequence is called VBAR approach as in your MCS. So let's go ahead and run this. It's going to kick off a few different target sequences. And then we'll take a look at the final result over here. So here we go. You can see my RPO actually goes towards my target satellite. Um, and when it does that, you'll see it, it, these, each of these little kinks over here, it's doing a small uh, burn in order to stay near the radio offset. Um, if I didn't, um, basically, it would do something more similar to a V-bar hop. Uh, but that's what we're doing. We're doing a series of small burns to maintain a near constant uh, direction. And if I were to like, change this and maybe change my um, error to be half a meter or something like that. Um, it'll rerun, reconverge, um, and then I will just basically have a couple smaller, um, couple more burns um, as I drift towards this target satellite. And this is again useful if you want to have a near constant viewing direction of your target. Uh, one thing to note is you don't want to cross through your target. So if you start on the negative view bar over here, you don't want to go to the positive over here. Or, or vice versa, you don't want to cross to your target, so it won't let you do that. Um, but taking a look at this particular sequence, if I go look at the MCS, um, the maneuver summary report, you can see it performed a multiple radial maneuvers right over here um, as it performed the sequence. It performed an initial in-track uh, rate and a stopping over here, a in-track burn to stop over there. Um, and you can see basically this initial delta V to kick me off and these series of small burns um, in order to actually move towards the target satellite. You also notice um, maybe a VBAR hop is actually more fuel optimal, but if you need to get somewhere more quickly, um, th this is still a really low delta V sort of maneuver depending on your orbit regime, um, but this isn't super costly. So maybe this isn't technically the most optimal, but it is still, um, you can still do these sorts of things with um, just a tad bit more fuel usage. OK, um, there's one last thing I'd like to cover uh, for this sequence. And that is basically it depends on some of the 
other sequences. Um, so if I take a look at this over here, I have a maneuver to kick me off towards my target satellite, initiate that interact drift. Uh, the second one, um, it's going to make use of auto sequences and special sequence stopping conditions um, down here. So if it were to exceed the radial rate or the um, radial position sort of offset, it's going to enter into these, um, it's going to perform a radial burn down here. So if I go take a quick look, in the RPO support sequences, there are these radial uh, impulsive burns that get triggered if I were to go too far off. Uh, we don't need to go into those. I just want to let you know that this may perform multiple uh, maneuvers during this propagate segment. And then once again, lastly, it's just going to match and stop on the V-bar over there. Okay, so that's going to be it for the V-bar approach. Thank you.